lecture number five. We're going to finish up world climates with two cold or very frigid climates. Climate number 12 is called the tundra climate. And like the previous climate, the boreal forest climate, this one is again named after the natural vegetation region that dominates. And that'll be in an upcoming lecture very soon. So what we've got here is a location in Greenland, a very high latitude location, well above the Arctic Circle. And of course, it's going to be the temperature uh, regime that's very important at this high latitude location. Basically, it's winter all year long. And there's three months that we kind of call summer, but I kind of even hesitate to say the word summer uh, when you've got temperatures just averaging above freezing uh, for three months. So it's June, July, uh, and August. So we kind of say like a short, mild season. And then after August, temperatures just take a nosedive. Here, the average temperature in August is, you know, freezing. And then it gets very, very frigid for the rest of the year. So it's basically winter all year long, except for th the three months of quote-unquote summer. Now, precipitation, uh, of course, it's going to be in the form of wave cyclones. That's kind of the only mechanism that's going to, you know, in this latitude range that might produce precipitation. And here, the average here in Greenland is only nine inches, you know, per year. Again, it's almost desert-like. And this is something, again, that we had seen with the boreal forest climate uh, in winter time, when you've got temperatures that are so frigid. That air just has a very, very small capacity to hold moisture. So the fronts that are move through tend to be very dry, right, producing, you know, very low to an annual totals. In terms of world locations, what we, uh, we've got a, a map focusing on the North Pole and the Arctic Ocean. So what we say this climate is located, you know, along the Arctic coastal fringes of, say, Alaska and Canada. Here's Greenland, where our climate graph is located, and then Russia. So that's kind of the, the major world locations. So let's kind of plot that on a hypothetical continent. So, you know, very high latitude, you know, well above the Arctic Circle. And there's our tundra climate. Our final climate is called the ice sheet climate. And again, it's, well, temperature, uh, it gets even colder. And in order to uh, be designated as the ice sheet climate, you've got to be in a location where there's no average monthly temperature above freezing. And what they've done here is they've got one location in Greenland in the, nor in the northern hemisphere. So during you know, the summer months, we're averaging uh, you know, about 10 degrees, so it's very, very cold. And all the remaining stations are in Antarctica. Now remember, during summer, our summer months, it's winter there. And so these are the wintertime temperatures of what, 90 below and 80 below. And then in summertime, here we are, this is kind of the critical definition, well below freezing. Again, precipitation is very dry. We've been talking about this. When you've got such cold temperatures, uh, it's uh, really desert-like conditions. We've been really kind of talking about very low uh, precipitation uh, totals of already in regards to uh, these frigid temperatures. And we really do have kind of desert-like conditions, true desert conditions, by the time you get to these very high latitude locations. We really call it a, a, a polar desert. Now, what we've got to do is move on to the next dump. Um, pressure belt that dominates at the poles, and it's the polar high, where cold, dense, sinking air creates high pressure. And so this climate is definitely a polar desert. Now, they don't even have the precipitation logged on here, you know, for, for any location. Uh, it's because it's, it's so minimal. You know, on average, uh, maybe, you know, locations in Antarctica or, or Greenland might only receive just a few inches of snow per year on average. That's how dry it is because it is just so frigid in the air, uh, can't hold any moisture. And so there are two major world locations. Uh, you know, here we've got uh, Antarctica, major world location, and these are all the weather stations that they had plotted here, right over the South Pole. Now, the North Pole, I mean, look, take a look at that. People don't really realize there's no land directly at the North Pole. It's the Arctic Ocean. So the highest latitude land mass that we have is Greenland. And so Greenland is another ice sheet. Uh, and so, you know, it's the ice sheet climate, and that's, again, where our climate graph is located. And so, uh, yeah, 
the question is, you know, so these are these are two areas that are, you know, covered with ice sheets, you know, on Earth. And the ice sheets are, you know, one to three miles thick. And, you know, the question is, you know, if this is a polar desert, only receiving, you know, inch, two, three inches of snow per year, you know, how do we wind up with uh, uh, glaciers that are so thick? And the answer is, any snow that is accumulated, in, no matter how minor it is, uh, because no average monthly temperature is above freezing, it tends to stick around. All right, so for the last whatever hundred thousand year or more, uh, any snow that has uh, fallen during the winter time doesn't melt in summertime; it just accumulates and accumulates. And so this is where we are, where we've we've got uh, glaciers. Now, of course, uh, global warming now is changing that trend. We're seeing the melting of ice sheets at a really dramatic uh, rate in, in Antarctica and in Greenland. So what we want to do is put in the polar high now on our hypothetical continent, go to 90 degrees, and this is the ice sheet climate here. Now, of course, our model can only show so much. You know, I we can only show the northern hemisphere location in Greenland. Can't really show Antarctica here. All right, so we finished off the 13 climates. Uh, now, on the next slide, I'll let you read that on your own about you know, how to study. But uh, one thing uh, that I want you to know is on the test, there are absolutely no numbers. You see that in my descriptions of temperature and precipitation. There are absolutely no numbers. So it's general generalizations about the temperature and precipitation regime. Now, if I were you, I would start studying with the tropics all right, and get 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 the tropics down, and then uh, kind of go to mid-latitude locations and just think about what you know about the United States, and then move on to the colder climates. Now, uh, you do have to be aware of a few other things. What uh, climates are only found on east coasts of continents? Uh, what climates are only found on west coasts of continents? Uh, of course, that the marine influence is going to dominate in the southern hemisphere where the continents taper. Now, uh, you're also going to have to know uh, the major controls of the temperature and precipitation that we've been talking about and major world locations, particularly those in the United States. And uh, then we're going to be moving on. The next uh, lecture or two or three is going to be on natural vegetation regions that uh, correspond with these climates. So you'll have to know that, too, once we, uh, once we get to that end lecture.